Chat, what's up? It is the Needed Podcast, episode 11. Shout out to all you guys that are in the chat now. Shout out to all you guys in the YouTube viewership that have watched this. I recently put up our last podcast, episode 10, in which we talked to the Madden Classic champion, Skimbo. So if you haven't had a chance to check that out, make sure you check it out. It is in my YouTube, so it, that link will be flowing throughout the chat. And obviously, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can go back to my recent videos. Check that out as well. Please hit the like button and comment on what else you'd like to see me talk about and whatever I have on the set talk about. First, I want to start by hoping all you guys had a happy holiday and a happy new year. It is January 1st, the first day of 2019. I'd say the last year of mine has been a roller coaster ride, but like I said, the last two years since Madden has become this big a fixture in my life, it's been all good. So it's definitely nothing to complain about. And I hope you guys have had a great 2018 and really look forward to having a great 2019, both in your lives and in Madden. I think this game can really grow. It's at a point where uh, we're really trying to strive to get better and better. And I think it has, and I think it, it will continue to do by the efforts, not only by me, but all you guys that pay attention to stuff like this and all you guys that, you know, enjoy it. Uh, that's that's what it's about. We got to find the people that truly enjoy Madden, talking about Madden and, and the ones that really want to help this game grow and become an esport that we all know it can because we all want it to be and that's the most important thing when striving out to do anything is all had the need and the desire to make it great and i think we can do that um like i said last week or it was two weeks ago because last tuesday was actually christmas so we definitely took a week off been two weeks since i talked to you guys in this setting and last week we talked about the man classic now prior to the man classic happening we had another club series event, another great event thrown by a NFL organization. We really appreciate the effort that these NFL teams put towards Madden because ultimately that's going to open up the biggest door for this to grow, and that was the Minnesota Vikings. I believe the Minnesota Vikings has thrown three club series events all three years. That club series has been a thing. They have had a huge event. The first two years it was in the uh, Mall of America, which is, if you have ever been to Minneapolis, is an amazing mall, and, you know, huge but because of security reasons, they did do it. I believe they did it at the stadium. I'm not sure exactly where it was, but it was good. You know, obviously, Strafen has won it twice, and then he lost, was the runner-up last year to Wint Goat. So he was able to come out with the victory. This, I want to say, almost three weeks ago now. But uh, mainly, the first two games really weren't that interesting. And the main game we really got to talk about is Jay Wolfman, who a lot of people were talking about coming into this uh, coming into this event. Obviously, a new name on the scene. We didn't really know too much about him, what he brought to the table. I, and they said in the broadcast that he had played straight for in, like, the group rounds and actually blew him out. So that plays a lot into uh, into playing the person for the second time, man, knowing what happened in the first game. Not necessarily that you got blown out, but how that person plays, what they want to do. You know, are they great on offense? Are they defense? Their personnel-wise, everything like that really plays a big part if you're playing somebody for the second time. But that, that's definitely the, the main game that I want to focus on and really watch because it was really interesting to me. This game, obviously, I watched live on the uh, EA Madden Twitch. And it was really interesting, man. I really liked the way uh, Jay Wolfman played. Obviously, I've played Ryan or Strafing a lot. You know, when someone's around that long, you're going to run into him, especially being on Xbox this much. And uh, definitely a good player. Definitely has made runs in all the tournaments he's been in, so he's definitely was the favorite going into this. And the Jay, like I said, the man Jay Wolf, man, everybody talked about him. I was really excited to see what he brought to the table, and he didn't disappoint, man. It was a pleasure to watch him play, watch him kind of freestyle. I'm pretty sure what's crazy about normally when you're at one of these man events, they'll uh, they'll switch like the point of view to the offense all the time. Like you'll always see the offense in front of you. You know, whether that's, I don't know what type of game capture they have, video capture to just capture both screens. But this game, we got the pleasure of just watching Jay Wolfman, both on offense and defense. 
They didn't switch. We showed we showed all his defensive adjustments and all his offensive adjustments. And one of the best things about this, as opposed to the man classic, which we talked about last week, is you are playing on different screens. Like when man, you play at home or whenever you play at home. So you can look at your play art as much as you want. You know, it's something that I, I do, and I'm assuming we all do a lot when we play Madden at home, and we know nobody can see our screen but us. So I always like seeing not only his offensive adjustments and what routes he wanted to throw at certain times in the game, but also the ability to see what he was doing on defense against Ryan, against Tripp's tight end, and whether it worked or not. Now, let's go get into this game. It is, uh, once again, we got to shout out my man Compton for putting these games on YouTube, making them very accessible for all of us. But if you ever want to check out any games in the past in the EA venue, any event, you can go to Compton's page. Search through all his past broadcasts. All the videos uploading, all of them, man. But as you see here, this is the first play of the game. Ryan has the ball first. Strafen, I'm going to call him Ryan. Uh, and uh, Wolfman is on defense. Now, this is a nickel normal, a little bit different than some people run. They keep the line spread. And what happens is if you don't block anybody, one of these DNs is going to come free. Like, I don't I don't know. Haven't played about uh, against it much. But I believe I played a couple guys running this same setup where one of these DNs will shoot in free if you don't block anybody. But this is Tripp's tight end, which is probably the, one of the best pass protecting things, especially when you start motioning the wide receivers. Like we talked about it before with the Pats Club Series with Jay Wall with motioning his wide receiver to help block, helping to run, and everything. Tripp's tight end is probably one of the most effective offenses this year. Probably, Trips tight end has been good since, I mean, they put it in, man. Anytime you put three wide receivers on one side of the field, whether it be in a bunch or be spread out, it's going to be pretty effective. And also with the run as well. But nickel normal, straight out the gate, is going to stop the run well. Like, that's pretty much, because you have a four down lineman, creates natural gaps. Because I if Jay Wolfman wants to blow up the inside zone, I feel like he can tackle Leonard Fournette in the backfield. But it's all up to him, depending on play, how often he wants to blow up the run another thing is he did man up his user on the running back a lot I, i'm assuming to help blow up the run but one thing about wolfman is that he stayed in cover three the whole game it was pretty much just he called the same defense every play cover three and just made some wild adjustments he really did make, make wild adjustments as you see straightman has moss Diggs, tyree kill michael vick leonard fournette and pruitt i don't know why he chose to use pruitt you see a lot of people come out in the New England book and audible trips tight end so they can have a running back there. Now, that makes it a little more effective because you can hit a drag and hit a little flat. You can fade them and have speed. I don't know, Pruitt obviously is not good. He's not going to be 90 speed, probably 80, something like that. So Ryan just so to really tank his tight end, and we'll see if that comes to play, but I'm just going to run this, this game a little bit and talk to you guys about what I see, and then you see play action stops that, and he hits the, the crossing route that you can't give up. Like, the number one rule when you play chips tight end is you can't give up that crossing route. And the first play, Jay Wolfman gives it up. I don't know if it was a quick snap. Like, when you see he just stays in this cover three, has Deion Sanders a free safety, Jamal Adams, and here it gets real crazy. Nobody in the middle of the field. Once again, Ryan runs that play action, the same play, but he's using it, and here goes Pruitt. He tries to hit him with the streak. Pruitt being slow and being bad allowed him, I mean, to cover both and kind of bait that streak, man. If he had 90 speed or somebody or Kittle or somebody like that, it would have been a lot harder for Jay Wolfman to bait both of those. But he caught him on the corner. Jay Wolfman did a good job not giving up that streak touchdown right there. Here you go again. Jay Wolfman get real crazy. Those underneath and Ron Parker, man. If you guys watch me play, I love Ron Parker. He's 20 cap. Give him that little speed gem like Yu-Gi-Oh cards, and he's actually 89 speed for 20 cap is really good. So we go Ryan hitting that little short dump down underneath, and, and you'll see as the game goes on, Jay Wolfman really just starts getting crazy with his adjustments. So you see here, like, I mean, he just has a flat zone. Everybody manned up, throws it at it again. Jamal Adams, he manned up the right person. Boom, forces him to kick a field goal. So you'll see that the whole game, man, Jay Wolfman really rarely ever had a safety in the middle of the field. Really got way crazier than I would on defense, but it, it worked right there. A lot of them get off the field. Holding Ryan to three is a big deal, especially like we talked about. Prior to this in, in groups, he actually blew Ryan out. So to be able to feel like, man, I blew him out already, like a week ago or whatever it was, whenever we played, I blew him out. Now I just held him to three. 
So, you know, that's got to be thinking on Ryan's head, too. Like, man, he just helped me to three and, and really just get up that one crossing route. So, you see, as the game goes on, hopefully he doesn't get up that crossing route no more. That's what you got to be thinking. And that's pretty much my rule when I play chips tight end, man. You can't go up that crossing route no matter how, you know, enticing it is to lurk down and go get one of them little in routes or anything. It's really important to not give up that crossing route. That's why a lot of times that B receiver, I will never man him up because he's not going to stop the crossing route anyway. And you'll see Jay Wolf, man, he does man him up sometimes for other things, but he mostly wants to man up the two other guys that want to run drags or in routes back across the middle of the field. And but it goes on, so on and so forth. He does a good job of uh, really mixing up his, his wild defense. He really definitely gets super wild. And he's in this trips trio under center which my buddy Vilma was running really early, and it really becomes a nightmare because you can run really effectively out of it. It has dive and it has a toss, and something that kills cover three is the toss. And that's one thing after watching this game a couple times is that, I, I mean, I don't even think Jay Wolfman ran the toss one time. Here he goes with a little high-low action to the right. Makes a great read, an easy read over there, and goes to Josh Gordon, a card that I actually just asked him why did he use Josh Gordon. He seemed that Josh Gordon was a little bit better than Randy Moss that he was using. Me, personally, Randy Moss is always on my team, but if not Randy Moss, somebody that could spin. And you can see, and I will tell you this about Ryan, is that playing him, he's always been a cover three guy, man. He's never been like a cover two type. Like, you know, Even in the last couple of years when cover two has been really dominant, whether it be outside linebacker fire out of 3-4 or DB fire or nickel blitz. Ryan's always been kind of a cover three guy. Like he's never really been a big cover two guy. Here we go with the toss. And that and that, that being said, if you're a big cover three guy, and I'll tell you from, like I said, Vilma ran this offense a lot in the beginning of the year, and I'll tell you they killed cover three. And right there you see the toss kind of got bagged because of his outside linebacker was outside. And you see a quick no huddle here by Jay Wolfman. But I see how far his outside linebacker is. I think he's I, he's just not baselining. That's really what it is. And I'll show you a little dot that I watched Jay Wolfman do a lot. He used this running back very well. But here, Ryan had the perfect defense. He manned up the, the hitch or the smoke screen. And then he had a cloud flag to cover that corner route over there. So he had nowhere to go over the middle of the field. He guarded a running back. And that, that was a good defensive call. I'm not mad at the offensive call, really. Here he gets to a fourth and five. This is something that Jay Wolfman did better than anybody I've seen so far, and that's utilized the running back wheel route. I've talked about it. A lot of people running out a bunch. A lot of people, I talked about T. Davis early in the year and ran it. Drag was the first person early in the year I see run it. But this flat and the wheel combination over here, and Ricky Williams comes up with a big catch. Great animation right there to fall on the ground so Jamal Adams couldn't tackle him. I think if Jamal Adams puts a hand on him or strips him, Ricky Williams might drop that, but he really held on to that. He used this wheel route and the flat route to the tight end so well because he could throw it quick like a screen or he could throw it uh, underneath right there, uh, whatchamacallit, wait for him to come upfield like he did on that fourth and five. There he goes, hits, hits uh, Josh Gordon there. That was a close pass. Um, he had him early, and maybe once they stop on the sideline, maybe a lot of times I like to high ball it just so they don't, you know, come back to the ball and you throw it right to the corner. If you high ball it, they'll go up and get it, and it won't be an opportunity for that corner to pick it off. But he's got a decent little drive going on right now. Great block shed there by, I don't know who did, 52. I hope it's or 92, maybe Reggie White. I don't know who that was. Really shedded his right tackle, stopped that from being a big play. As you can see, his players are tired now. All yellow, man. That's the downside of having a long drive. Your players will get tired, and like there, right there you saw him take a lot of time at the huddle. And that's something that, you know, you have to do, especially when you're a long drive and salary cap. You have to take time in the huddle, scroll through your plays, and give your your players the opportunity to catch their breath. This is also a play that he ran a lot, motion over this corner route, make it a post, throwing the knee here to Steve Smith. Nice little catch in traffic in front of Jamal Adams. Give him the opportunity to make some plays. Get it to a third and four right here. Makes it a lot more manageable for him to go ahead and uh, convert this. Stay alive, holding uh, straight from the three points on his first drive was huge. If he can get seven right here, that would be big. So he pretty much, Jay Wolfman's offense is pretty much between the trio. Pretty much just that one play with the corner route and bunch tight end. I mean, obviously, I play Bugs a lot. He runs bunch tight end. So I know most of the route combinations, and that was just a beautiful laser right there. 
That corner route's going to get over to Cloud and cover two. I talked about Ryan being a cover three guy. That play, he was in some type of cover two. Able to make the right read, throw it at the right time, and fit that corner route in. Huge start to the game by Jay Wolfman, man. Holding him to three, going down the field, getting seven is huge. It's definitely a, a big um big momentum for Jay Wolfman, man. Definitely uh, feeling good. He gets the ball at half. Just pretty much got to uh, slow down his crossing route from Trips tight end, and he'll be looking pretty good. <clears throat> You see, Ryan definitely has Fournette. Fournette, if you're not having a rookie, you got to have Fournette, especially at this time of the year. We remember, I mean, we all have fun playing salary cap now, but this was before it was a doubt. See that, these adjustments, look, manning up pretty much everybody. Like I said, inside zone, even though that guy got ran over, you got to feel good about your run defense there because you did grab him before he even got to the line of scrimmage. <clears throat> Ron Parker definitely got trucked, but as long as you're getting bodies on and putting hands on him, I mean, the run shouldn't hurt you that much. Also, like if you, if you are um, Ryan, you got to see that too. And here's Michael Vick just running away, throwing the ball away. That's people talk about. It's not even his scrambling. It's plays like that where he can snap and run away and throw the ball away. Well, like I said, if you're Ryan and you see him blowing up inside zone like that, you're hesitant to call it, even though Fournette got 12 yards on that. You saw how easily he blew that up. Once again, manned up, threw it before he get the man got there and actually hit Randy Moss. There's the guy in the Prince jersey they were talking about on broadcast. There he is. Prince, yes. Good job. Um, this was important to show us on the stream. But we're back here. We got a third and seven. Third and seven. Got to get off the field here. Little hitch underneath. Good play there by Ryan mixing it up, man. He didn't have a manned up that play. Like I said, I wouldn't man up B either, but because he blitzed all the corners on that side, he blitzed the whole half of the field. He had to guard the tight end on the fade and allowed – he wasn't able to lurk that little hitch. So one of the differences between Jay Wolfman and Strafen is Strafen is in a very conventional offense for Madden 19. I mean, this is something Jay Wolfman has seen a lot. <clears throat> it's definitely something that uh, he has played against before. And we see my man Rico and my man Larry, who always do a great job of commentating, always uh, are a pleasure to listen to all the time. But <clears throat> we missed that play. I don't know what happened, but it seemed like an overthrow to Tyree Kill. And uh, oh, we're looking at my guys again, man. But like I said, I really appreciate everything they do for Madden, especially uh, Larry and, and uh, Rico. They do a lot for our game. He was going to, oh, he's able to hit the corner route here. That time, I wish he would have got a better click on right there. If he clicks on to Melvin, and he actually held on to that pass, too. I felt like if he clicked on to Melvin, he could have jumped off and picked that off. I don't know where his click on was or, or who he, maybe they clicked him under the deep blue. That looked like it could have been a pick. I mean, throwing to a short receiver like that, like he do to uh, Tyreek Hill, the trajectory of the ball is lower, so taller DBs can jump and pick it off. Here we see Pruitt, his 10 cap tight end, didn't want to get off the line of scrimmage on that play. I mean, you got to invest in a tight end if you want him to get off the line. Right there, Pruitt did not get off the line. He threw it underneath. Ryan with a decent drive right now, man. He's got a second and three. <clears throat> like I said, we saw how Jay Wolfman can blow up inside zone. A little surprised if Ryan can go ahead and try to pop inside zone, and he does right here. That's, man, Zach Sealer, number 95, man. If you guys are playing salary cap and you want a fat lineman that's got decent speed and strength, Zach Sealer is 14 cap. You see him holding down the middle for Jay Wolfman right there. We get to a third and two right here for Strafen. Uh, Wolfman has been blitzing a lot, and this is a good call by him. He doesn't blitz at all, and Ryan just has a pretty pretty nasty play to put out there. He just put a running back flat in a drag, and uh, Wolfman didn't blitz that play. Just played cover three, shade underneath, and Ryan had nowhere to throw the ball. So great defensive call, questionable offensive call. I mean, I guess it would have worked if he went back to blitzing a bunch of people, but because he dropped back in coverage, that call was a uh, – there's nowhere for Ryan to go with the ball. So he held him to another field goal, man. It's a frustrating part of Madden, but something that, looking back on this game, and shout out to Compton, man, get your money, brother. That's what I'm talking about. Put all these ads in these games as much as you can. <clears throat> but going back to that, kicking your field goals is important, man. During the first half of the game, you want to accumulate as many points as possible. Even though it's frustrating, kicking two field goals and having him have seven, the six keeps you alive, man. If you don't get points there, man, it's a really devastating thing. 
And that's one thing that that allowed Ryan to really uh, come up with this victory is always kicking field goals, staying alive. <clears throat> you see Ryan in three three five normal. And Ricky, I mean, you got we got to put a juke out there or something with man. We got to catch a juke, try to truck. You got Ricky Williams, man, make him work. And that's one thing we talked about Noonan in the Eagles Club series where he would just run right into people with, with Ricky Williams. Dude, you got to make. I know you paid a lot of cat for your running back, man. Use him for that cat, pretty much is what I'm saying. <clears throat> Let me see what we get. So we got two runs and we got a first down. Now, this is where you have to start taking your time at the huddle. Ricky got the ball twice, man. You don't want Ricky to come out the game. You don't want Ricky to be tired. Take your time in the huddle, especially getting ball at half. This can be the last drive of the half. After two runs, getting a first down, Wolfman's going to cook up a pretty, pretty peculiar play here. Let me show you this play at, once he motions in. <clears throat> so he's going to have this out route. He ran this play earlier in the half. He has this out route and this corner route. This is going to be his high low. Now, in the first half, Ryan gave up this corner route. First play of the game over here on the right side. So from there, if I'm right, I'm not really giving you a hard flat look over here because you, you've shown me you have this corner route to hit. Boom. So what Ryan's going to do here, he's going to blitz. And the only other hot route, this or hot when I say hot route, I mean something he can throw fast if there's a blitz, is this running back hitch. So what Ryan does here, actually blitzes the corner, which is something he's done in Madden forever. He pretty much just calls a random play on defense or whatever. But one that he always calls that not a lot of people call anymore, especially against spread, is the corner blitz. And he calls it this play, and it works really well for him because this outside linebacker in the corner will definitely distract these two linemen, allowing this DN to come free. And because all these routes are kind of like to start off right in this area, he can lurk them all. So Wolfman has really nowhere to throw the ball, and I'll show you guys what happens on the biggest play of the game, one of them. Now let's see, these two guys distract this guy. He walks right in. Boom, he's lurking this area where all these routes develop. <clears throat> McNabb gets hit, and Vita Vida, Vita Vive. You watch any of my videos, I felt like this guy was the best D tackle in the beginning, first month of the season. Comes up with a huge interception. Boom. Big pick for Ryan because he's kicked two field goals. Now he's automatically right back in field goal range, dwindling down the first half of the game. It's definitely a, a big play for him to be able to get momentum like that. We see inside zone popping, Leonard Fournette. Even though he ran somebody over, he got bad animation. You can tackle him. That's what I mean about if you run defensive, you can just get hands on him, man. He won't always get that smooth animation. Sometimes you'll hold him up. Sometimes he'll spin around like that. Now you can grab him and really uh slow down the run <clears throat> you see ryan is a random dude he went from trips tight end now he's in bunch wolfman's even more random on defense manning up rb here uh manning up x now he's got everybody manned up running back streak everybody is manned up everybody's box great defense throws the ball away and what kills him really is that now the two-minute warning is still going to work. Still going to be a big play. Still going to uh, stop the clock here. So Ryan, clockwise, didn't run the clock as well as possible. But this is a huge play, man. If you're a wolf, man, you really got to find – you really got to start feeling like, man, I'm going to get off the field here. This is, I'm going to get the ball back. Even though I just threw that pick, I'm going to hold him to another field goal. And he goes with the rush five. And Michael Vick does what Michael Vick does. First down. Two-minute warning. Clock stops. Tons of time left. The time isn't a factor right now. Really, for either people, if you're Wolfman, you're probably going to get the ball back unless Ryan plays this perfectly. I would start thinking about using my timeouts on defense right away because I want the ball back. Ryan would have to get another first down, run a bunch of times, and, and really uh, use the clock perfectly for me to not to get a first down. <clears throat> Um, for me not to get the ball back. See, see, he's in New England, so he has this little toss right here and Fournette just fighting. And for Ryan, that's perfect because he gets him to a second and one or second and two. So it looks like he's probably going to get that first down. He's able to take – he should take all 30 seconds off the clock here. 
And like I said, if I'm on defense, I'm starting to think about using my timeouts. I'm definitely going to uh, find a way to um, get the ball back in the second half. And if I'm Ryan, this is an automatic run no matter what. And Jay Wolfman thinks that too because he's in an outrageous defense that uh, definitely is, is run-stopping defense. Ryan takes all the time off the clock. <clears throat> Big hit right there. Jay Wolfman uses timeouts. That's exactly what I would do if I was on defense. Third and two, this is a huge play. As far as I'm concerned, if he's in a run set, I want to sell out on the run probably. If he's in any type of pass set, no matter what, I need a spy on the quarterback. In this formation, I'm probably thinking level sale, but he quick snaps the inside zone for net trucks. Decent play. I would use my timeout again. On Now you have to. Once you use one timeout, you got to be committed to using the timeouts. Jay Wolfman needs the ball back uh, before half. Definitely, most importantly, he needs them hold him to um, hold him to three, which he's done twice already. It said manning up the safeties. That always helps with the run. Sir Fournette almost fought number 20. I don't know if that's Reed or Barber or somebody just held him back. Now, if you're Ryan, second and goal on the one-yard line, man. This is where I'm just full steam ahead. I have Leonard Fournette. He's already ran over six people on his drive. I'm not doing anything but Leonard Fournette right up the gut. Because most importantly, even if I kick a field goal, the game is the, the half is all the way over. And you see Jay Wolf, man, he had no choice. But I love that he went off sides there. I, I've showed this on podcasts before, man. Just go off sides. It doesn't matter that much that close to the end zone. And he didn't have any timeouts anyway. But I see so many people waste their timeouts in a situation like that. So he comes out in goal line defense, man. And if you're Ryan, man, he came. He called timeout to come out in his defense. You have to think why he has to have some type of defense. And you go for the toss and his box. Now, I want to talk about this, man. Because <clears throat> nothing grinds my gears, as they say. And I talk about this. Skimbo is somebody I tell this all the time. I hate that call. You have two downs to get this much yardage. Two downs. You have Leonard Fournette. You pay him 60 cap, whatever it may be. Put him on aggressive. Go full steam ahead. Whether it's fullback dive, iso, power roll, whatever it may be. The further you move the ball behind the line of scrimmage, the more likely that is to happen. Now you're kicking a field goal. Now you're shit out of luck. Five yards, you have one play, and and all you can run is hope Leonard Fournette gets in. But if you go ahead and run forward, boom, run somebody over. You might get in, you might not. You might get that much closer. But it also gives you opportunity. Instead of third and goal from the five, we have third and goal from the inch line again. And if you run forward again, boom, you don't get in. But, damn, maybe we have fourth and goal from the inch line. Maybe we have three shots at getting this much with Leonard Fournette. I hate going for the toss on second down. I will always hate a toss call on something that's not fourth down or third down if you're guaranteed to kick the field goal, man. I think that toss call really killed him. He could have scored, could have scored seven here and went up 13-7. to seven. Just keep it full steam ahead, especially if you have Leonard Fournette. All that cap, all that money in the running back, got to use him to the best of his ability, man. I hate a toss call on second down every time. <clears throat> I said... I'm playing toss a thousand percent here. He, I don't think he has a little cute dot. And great play right here by Barber again, man. And at well, he ran out of bounds, really trucked there. But but Barber got off the block and was the one that really. I wish I'd show you this play again, man. Was really the one that made this play. Barber got off this block. This is Deion Sanders. And uh, down here in the goal line, the one thing I do, I don't like Deion. Now the cap is different, so I. I Deion's probably my slot corner. He's definitely not my safety down here in the goal line. But Barber makes this play, and uh, what happens is Wolfman actually clicks on strafes, takes away the spin because, I mean, I'm bad. You know, I'm a bad player. So what I do, if I see you beat that block, I'm going to probably spin right away. As soon as he beats this block, I'm looking. I got to beat this guy, and Wolfman actually clicks on, pulls him back for the spin, even though maybe with these two guys pursuing the spin wouldn't have worked. So he can't spin him, tries to truck him, and steps out of bounds, man. Not only does that not get in the end zone, but it does leave time on the clock. Not that Jay Wolfman has a lot of time to work. He has no timeouts, not that much time. But definitely his time still on the clock. <clears throat> but now we're at the one-yard line here, man. But Ryan has always already kicked two field goals. Because of that, a third field goal is going to give him the lead. So good job at managing the clock. I hated the toss call on second down. 
but he wound up getting three anyway. He has the lead on three field goals, man. I talk about seven and threes all the time, but, I mean, this sucks taking three, but if you if you stay to it, you're going to be in a tight game. You know this is Jay Wolfman. It's the biggest game he's ever played. Naturally, he's going to be nervous, so just stay in the game, try to make a couple plays, and really just – there you go. Deion Sanders almost got busy right there. So now you got a big kick return. That changes the whole outlook of the drive. I mean, you go from – you go from no chance to get points. Now you're at the 42 instead of the 32 or the 25. Time to make a couple plays right here. And this is a good one. My man Jay Wolfman got really wild. We're going to go out here and go with the double. Ah, I can't see it. <clears throat> go out here and go with the double post routes. The double post. So in other words, when this breaks down, he has no one to throw the ball to. Until these two guys get 25 yards down the field. So he wants these six guys to hold up for these wide receivers to get 25 yards down the field and one or the other. Because it's pretty. these guys are pretty much running people off. And Ryan's going to have a lurk here. So you pretty much put these two routes out here and try to shoot, try to wait for him to choose which one he's going to cover. And you throw to the other one. There's no drag. Obviously, it's tough to throw the ball in bounds in this situation because there's no time really. And he has no timeout. So you have to get out of bounds. I would have loved to see him. He's been high lowing him to death all day. I would love to see just a flat and a corner route with a streak. Take the flat, get eight yards, get out of bounds, get eight yards, get out of bounds. Give yourself a chance to get around the 50-yard line and one more dot for a field goal. Because this play right here, I mean, you need all day for this play to work. Ryan sends five people. He comes free, just shucks something. And so now that just wasted four seconds off his clock. Now he still has plenty of time. See, something like this would even be better if you hit this little out route or this corner route or something where you got you to gotta get out of bounds, obviously. And a drag isn't the worst thing. Now we go with two corner routes. Let's see if he makes a read over here on the left. Has a little baby out route. He took that out route. Ooh, didn't catch it right there. Great play over there by Darius Slade. One of the best cars in caps, especially early in the year, made a play there. Now you're down to 15 seconds. Third down, kind of thinking, man, I got to take some time off the clock here so he doesn't get the ball back. I'm definitely going to punt if I don't get this. And he might go again with the uh, the double post, or does he go double corner routes? Double corner routes. I like it. What's he going to play? He has nothing to throw short. Like, if he gets any pressure on him, there's nothing for him to throw short. Oh, maybe he's going to go with double post now. Yep, he went back to double post. I like it. <clears throat> I mean. Big pressure. He's got some time. Ricky Williams just didn't block a soul there for him. Got him to nine seconds. He's going to go ahead and punt this ball off. And Ryan runs the ball. That's the end of the half, man. They show this guy walking. Pretty cool. This is the best stadium in the world. This is where the Eagles won their Super Bowl. So it's, it's three field goals to one touchdown, man. Ryan's had three drives. Wolfman's really had two. He got the one touchdown drive and that little pick by Vita Vea. That's pretty much been the whole game. I mean... I really think Jay Wolfman is playing good. Ryan made a couple plays, and he's playing real conservative. He's taking his threes. He's staying alive in the game. When I say staying alive, he's actually winning now, but he's not forcing anything. You know, he's not reaching. He's not chasing points. He's he's not happy taking threes, but he's taking them because they accumulate. And we'll see how that plays out as the game goes on. Second half of the game, like I said, Jay Wolfman gets the ball, but he is down 9-7. to seven. <clears throat> like I said, his offense was either the trio or it was this bunch tight end. Here we go once again with this running back wheel route. Nice dot over here. Did he catch it? Yeah, he got his feet in there. Nice dot. I don't know if there was a hard flat. He didn't have another flat route over there to pull that flat down. It was pretty much just that corner route and a hitch. Didn't love that because if that was a cloud flat, he had nowhere to throw the ball to. But it was a hard flag. He was able to fit that in. Get a ball to Ricky. His center went crazy right there. <laughs> Rolled on the ground. Didn't block anybody. Only got one yard. But you see how fast he's calling his plays. Chat, he's not scrolling through. He's not taking his time at the line of scrimmage. It might sound like an insignificant thing. But in salary cap, you don't have backups. So you have to make sure you give these guys health. Give them power. I know we're playing Yu-Gi-Oh! But you need to rest them in the huddle. Give them their powers back. Give them their gem of fortitude, their gem of strength. 
give him some time. Once again, we see this running back wheel route with the tight end. He does a good job slowing down, letting Kittle get a block, trucking Deion Sanders. Great play right there, man. Really slowing down a lot. He's run that play a lot. I tell you that running back wheel with the flat is kind of like a makeshift screen on the backside of most of his plays. So you go. Now he's scrolling through his plays, but Ricky's extra tired. Now he realized once Ricky's tired, he starts scrolling through his plays. Now, sometimes you've got to remember, I know it's hard, and I don't do it all the time. Always scroll through your plays, even if they're blue, even if they're light blue. Don't wait until they're red or the yellow to scroll through your plays. There he goes. Get a ball to Ricky again. Tackled right away by 28. Milton, who is the salary cap god this year. He called a play right away again. Once you get caught up in a moment of a game, man, we all play the game. You get caught up. You don't think about little things like that. And this is one of the biggest plays of the game that I talked to him about <clears throat> that I thought he should have a touchdown. And I asked him, why does he use this Josh Gordon card? That was it. Because this, this, this can't be the spin for our cap. Of the door sets and the Ridleys, you got to have a door set or a Ridley right here. I said, you get this right here. A good spin, this is a touchdown. A good spin, this is touchdown a thousand percent of the time with Dorsett or Ridley. This is touchdown all over. We all play the game. This is a spin move waiting to happen. Gordon does not have spin. Josh Gordon was his choice. And here we go. His running back is tired. He's, he's trying to bring him back to life. He brought him back to yellow. Honestly, on first down, might be my down to sub out Ricky. Cause, and I talked about this as soon as the game was over, man. And I talked about strafing with Fournette. Man, you pay this much cap to a running back, this is where you lean on your running back. And he's going to go ahead and run with yellow Ricky. Runs with him here. Spin move. Uh, he gets to the full. He gets two yards. So after a spin, now Ricky, he's, Ricky's got to sub out. So Ricky has to sub out. He's trying to bring him back. Look, but Ricky Ricky wants to take the playoff off, man. He's tired. So he's got Irvin. Now, if we play salary cap, Irvin is 85 speed, 10 cap. Everybody should have him somewhere on your team. Because <clears throat> you need a 10 cap anyway. The lowest cap possible with the fastest speed. Never want to give him the ball. Never want to, uh, what you call it? Never even want him on the field. But because this play, this drive is getting close on 10 plays for the drive, didn't pay attention to Ricky's stamina until he was already tired. Uh, and this is where you want to lean on Ricky. Uh, and it's almost to the point where, like I said, first down, I might have gave Ricky the breather. Might have took him out, subbed into Irvin. But he has Irvin here on second down. Second and goal on the four. Talked about it was strafing, man. Full steam ahead is normally the call. But Wolfman, because he doesn't have Ricky, and he's sad. He's he, listen. Tell you, I want Ricky right now. Like this is this is why you pay him the, the sixty cap or whatever you pay him. But I want Ricky right now. But because he doesn't have Ricky, he decides. You know, I'm gonna sneak a little. Bit. I'm gonna run my my J Wolfman inside the four dot. We all have a dot. I have the W inside the four. There's the Skimbo inside the four. There's everybody has a little inside the four. Mind you, they probably all suck. But we all have a little inside the four dot. Now, Jay Wolfman says, you know, I'm going to run the Jay Wolfman inside the four because Ricky's tired. Now, I'll tell you this. If I don't want to run the ball with Irvin, I damn sure don't trust him running an angle right over the middle of the field, right? He's not going to catch this shit inside the five with 17 purple or uh, Vikings jerseys right here. He's not going to catch the ball. So I understand passing, but I, I wouldn't have never put Irvin on a route. So what he does, he decides, I'm going to go ahead and pass. And he doesn't want to run with Irvin. I don't blame him. Has Kittle on the corner route, high ball. He smart routes it. That's pretty nice. And he throws a little thing. Bang. And he's going to take off right here. Now, I will tell you, I, I said it from the beginning of the year. I lost to Estelle in the Eagles Club Series last year, probably about a year ago, maybe more, maybe 14 months ago. And he killed me with Michael Vick. And you know what I said to myself? If there's a Michael Vick out, he will be my quarterback. No matter what, I don't care about thresholds. I don't care about left-handed quarterback. I don't care about anything. I care that Michael Vick is a freak. He's the best player in Madden history. He's the best player on the Madden field. 
Michael Vick, I I, I don't want to say this is a touchdown, but it's damn sure closer than, than Donovan McNabb with a touchdown. Because he's got a user here. I don't know if he sends this guy or he sends one of these guys he's probably sending because if I'm on defense, I'm jamming the right stick in. No, he doesn't really. It's just his, it's just his user comes down and strips him with Jamal Adams and gets the fumble. So compound to him not having, obviously not wanting to run because Ricky was tired, not utilizing the stamina, the stamina coming into play and taking Ricky out the game. Boom. And then he wants to pass. Then he doesn't have Vic. He has McNabb, who obviously, McNabb is probably my favorite player ever. But he's never going to be my quarterback in Madden as long as Michael Vick is available. Michael Vick, that might be a touchdown. But instead, it's a fumble. A bunch of things. Very unfortunate play. We see the quarterback run a lot. Not, not all the time is it a fumble. But he definitely fumbles right there. Boom. So 9-7. to seven, Drives down the field. Great job, executed well, gets inside the 10. Stamina killed him. And got stripped with the quarterback. It happens to all of us, it happens to me, probably more than anybody in the world. But now he's got to play defense. Could have had the lead without that fumble, even if it was 10 to 7. Now we got to stop inside zone. We had a ball on the two yard line. That's the only good thing. He goes a little man coverage, throws it underneath Tyreek Hill. Strafen had a lot of these snap throws, whether it's the in route, the hitch, whatever it may be. He had a lot of that all year. As you see, Strafen, uh, uh, whatchamacallit, just went on aggressive, I believe. Was aggressive tackle or aggressive pass rush? One or the other. But uh, here we go. A little, ooh, Ron Parker again. I'm telling you guys, get a Ron Parker on your team. Shut it off the block. Wrapped the looped around, made a tackle on Fournette. So if you're strafing, man, you're thinking to yourself, if I go get seven, man, this game is over, especially if I take a little bit of time off the clock. Oh, a little playmaker. Ryan's always been a playmaker guy. That has always been his thing is to have a little playmaker. And if you're Wolfman, you're pissed because you've been manning people up all day. And as soon as you don't man somebody up, he goes and hits you with the playmaker. And the next play, you man him up. Smart. Now we're using the corner. I like it. And we're going to call it on a D tackle. We're going to give up the crossing route. Probably this play. Boom. Make a tackle. You have to spin move. Good tackle there by Rod Woodson. So if you're Ryan, you're back in field goal range, which you've already kicked three field goals. So you're back in field goal range. You can't risk it by doing anything dumb. Definitely going to see a heavy dose of Mr. Fournette. I mean, Deion Sanders, man, he he just is pretty much a walking truck stick. But <clears throat> I said it earlier, just because you got trucked doesn't mean that, you know, that's bad run defense, man. Because he got trucked, slowed him down, somebody else was able to shed and get to him. Great defense here. Manned up everybody the right way. Know what to do, and Ryan throws the ball out, and he hits him after the throw. That's what you got to do. You got to let the quarterback know it's going to be a long day. Now, that's why I say the way they call roughing the passer penalties now in the NFL, man, if you want to get a roughing the passer penalty, make it count. You know, he made it count right there. He put Michael Vick into the dirt. Here we go, third and seven. Ryan run, is in a weird form in this U trips that he hasn't run all day. So if you're Wolfman, you're pretty much – you manned up everybody. You have the tight end. The tight end's on a streak. You're doing good. Everybody's boxed. Great defense. Don't send your spy too early. Sent them at the right time. Ryan has to throw the ball away. So good job, man. Ryan came out in that new new formation the first time a whole game. And Wolfman really had the bag for it. Held him to another three. So this is four field goals, man. Ryan's had four drives, kicked four field goals. Wolfman has had three drives, easy seven, a, a tipped up pick inside the pocket. And that fumbled the goal line with the with the quarterback. I mean, if you kick threes and turn your opponent over, man, you're definitely going to be in a good spot. And now Ryan is up a whole five points. So Wolfman needs to score a touchdown. This is the drive of his life. This is the drive of his MCS year. This is definitely uh, – this is going to show you what, what man players are made of, pretty much, the drive right here. After all that bad stuff happens, so you still have a chance to go win the game. This is his favorite play probably out of this trio. Obviously, it is. He's got a high low on the right. Now, he, he magically goes. Let me show you. He magically goes from that high low he had on the right. He, he has this high low on the right. And he moves. Look at his safeties. 
So he wants to go uh, out route, which this guy really is an option, but a lot of times you'll see him motion him in, make him more of an option. But he, he's got this high-low over here on the right with the running back angle route just for something to throw back over the middle if his user comes and lurks all the way over here. But what he sees is he moves his safety so far, and he's got Tyreek Hill on his fade. And halfway through this, he says, you know what, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to go for it. This guy, Deion Sanders, has to cover Tyreek Hill on a fade. Now, we use a fade rather than a streak because the streak will run right along these, these numbers. And it's not really the down here you got to guard. It's just the, the, the separation he gets from the middle of the field that makes the fade better. It fades away from the middle of the field. And that's going to make Deion not have to just cover here, but actually cover to the sideline. And he decides, I'm going to go for it. It's first down. I'm not mad at it. It looks like, honestly, they're, they're, they're even right now. And if you're even, you're leaving. That's pretty much how it's been a man, especially with a pass lead to the right, because they are even right here. But they're definitely not even to the sideline. So he definitely has, you know, five yards, five, six yards here. And, he, and they're even here. So a pass over here will definitely get it in. And he goes for it. He lobs it. Uh, and he goes out of bounds. I don't even think he ever had him, man. But if you're, I, I, I probably would have held the ball a little bit longer. I mean, you definitely got the pass protection. Maybe held the ball longer. And one of the other problems is his two underneath routes here are definitely still, uh, still guarded, still lurked. You know, he can lurk both of these routes. I probably would have still kept this guy on the corner route. Maybe he knows something I don't. But I'm pretty sure you can still throw this deep route even if he was still in the corner route. That way you have somewhere else to throw the ball over here because now you're, this lurk is going to guard both of these guys. But anyway, he tries to burn Dion. Didn't work. I like it. Sometimes you got to just throw it up there let him know that, you know, I'm here. I'm, I mean business. You know, this isn't just, you know, I'm not here for, for, for fun and games. You know, you got to let him know you'll throw it up there. So maybe next time you won't have Dion in here, you know. But then again, there he is right there, Dion, right there, eight yards off the ball. This is another play I hate. <clears throat> another play I hate, but he throws the ball away. I'll tell you why I hate this play. Hitch, you're not, you're not throwing this. As cute as it is, and I, I was I don't remember what man it was, but the low ball hitch, like the snap low ball to smoke screen was like ten yards a pop, and I hated that. But now they're point you can't even throw them. Even if there's a deep blue. This is only going to get you five or six yards because the way they catch it is just obnoxious and you can't get a lot of yards. We know the fade isn't open. So now you motion over this corner route, which probably could have been open both times, but you motion him over. He's going to go right across the middle of the field. Now you're just going to try to play with – as far as I'm concerned, when I'm playing offense, I don't want to go anywhere near your user. I don't want to have to make a read and – like – I don't want to have to react to your user at all. I want to make your user go somewhere else and throw to the other side of the field. You know why? Because the computer is predictable. I can predict what the I know what the computer is going to do. I know what a cloud fast is going to do. I know what a deep blue is going to do. I know what a hard flash is going to do. I already know that. I don't know what the user is going to do. And this play that he draws up a second and ten, and the drive of his life is pretty much I'm going to see what his user guards, either this guy or my running back. Because these two guys aren't an option. They're not. So he has this play, he's going to just throw this post route or he's going to throw this running back angle route. In other words, he's going to throw right at Ryan's user and try to decide where he's going to go. Luckily for Wolfman, he goes ahead and gets shedded right here or screamed at actually and throws the ball away. But I just didn't like that play. I didn't mind the first one going for the whole thing. The second one, I didn't like that play. You know, so now he's in a bunch tight end. This is... I don't want to say this is better passing formation, but it's it's a better passing formation, honestly. So now he's got to cook up another dot here on third down, or yep, third and ten. And you see Ryan come out and dial or something. I mean, Ryan's just all over the place on defense. It's hard to play against. This is his main dot and probably his main play that he likes to run. Right, ah, missed it. But he's able to hit Ricky. Huge tackle right there. I don't know who 22 is. Mel maybe he's Melvin, too. But he just made a huge. Yeah, it is Melvin. He made a huge tackle right there. I'll tell you, I saw about that running back wheel route. There you see Minneapolis. That's where the Eagles won the Super Bowl in that building. But Melvin made a huge tackle for Ricky Williams. 
if you're Wolfman, once again, you're mad that Ricky. I, I want to know this, too. Let me see before this play. I want to see something that's probably going to piss me off. But <clears throat> third and ten. No, Ricky's not tired. His other wide receiver is tired. He's been running down the field. Now, third, like I said, third and ten, you want Ricky to fight right there. But Melvin brought him down. Took it to the fourth quarter. Melvin brought him down. He's got a fourth and short. Fourth and very manageable. To me, it's pretty much fourth and three is any flat route, any zig route, any drag on cloud flats will get this first down. So this is very manageable. And you got to see what like I said. He's really been using Ricky well with that wheel route. And here he goes with the with a play, kind of a play that Bugs would run out of bunch tight end, where he has a flat route the hill to take all these zones to the left, Kittle on a slant, post to see Smith. Now he motions out this fade. Normally this fade is just to run off the zone so you can see Smith on his post route. And you'll see what he does there. He puts him on the out route. Because he's not baseline, so these guys are real close to the, to the bunch. They're real close to the inside. So he's thinking I can hit this little quick out route over here, which isn't bad. It's a lot. I'll tell you this. It's a lot of pressure on making this read. And hoping these guys don't shoot out here. Because once you do this, this is what you're kind of locked in on, your eyes-wise. Especially if he blitzes. And this is an open. You have to go take your eyes all the way back from the right side, all the way back to the left. Which is a lot of stress on you. So you hope this guy is open when you do this. He backed him up. And he's able to hit this out route boom underneath there. 53, I don't know who that is. I don't want to say it's Nigel Bradham 10 cat. But it might be. Doesn't get out there in the flat zone. So good dot way to cook one up, man. That was definitely a freestyle dot. Worked out for him. And he's going to stay in bunch tight end, I think, for this drive. Most of it. Ah, oh, man, I feel like he had a lot. But he's actually over here to hit the corner route. Stayed on the sideline for him. Josh Gordon. I'll talk about Josh Gordon again. I don't know what his speed is. But, man, oh, man, oh, man. That was a huge play for him to stay in bounds. But I want to – I want to – I need a touchdown on this one. Now, me personally on this play, if I throw it here, I'm definitely holding Y to come back to the ball. He held X and got a great animation. Deion caught him, man. We got a stiff arm or, or fight through that tackle, man. I, I promise you, Philip Dorsett would have fought through that tackle. But he learned his lesson once, man, with Ricky Williams being tired. Now, this is probably the most peculiar. For a man that I enjoyed watching freestyle, these next three plays are like, Like, what? I don't understand what, what's going on, and I'll show you these plays that he did. He, he gets real cute hit down here, and I, I think this guy right here, if we, we we watched Madden this year, it's halfway through the Madden year, Madden 19, man, and these running backs on aggressive are dogs, whether it be Fournette or Ricky Williams, have been absolute animals so far, man. And I, Eddie George is probably one we're going to see a lot in the club series coming up here. But I, I, at this point, the time and the score and first down, yeah, this guy right here got to be more involved. And I'll show you the plays that he goes for here. One, he's back to his money play. Corner route fade, hitch, high low right here, backside angle route. Kittle is never an option on this thing. He's better off blocking him every time. But he's going to get real freaky. He's going to just... Just like he's going all over the place. Now we're going drag, slant. Everybody just a bumble fuck here in the middle. Just everybody. He's going to be able to guard everybody. I hate when people have a bunch of routes going right to the middle of the field because it's really hard to read. It's hard to make a read. You can guard him. But I don't know if that's exactly what he, he, he ends up on. Oh, he motions them over. So we have a drag corner. This is pretty standard Madden. With the fade to Tyreek Hill. Motion over this. Oh, he kept, the, he kept the slant on this side. Went for the fade here, man. And that's, I mean, I don't know what Dion was doing there. But if I'm Jay Wolf, man, I want this touchdown. I want that. My Tyreek Hill got to come up with that. After all that, all these slants in the middle of the field, it might it might have been a cover three bomb. Just put everybody on a slant and the deep blues, like, just suck down or something. Pause. But it worked. Tyreek Hill did not get his feet in there, man. But this is the play. This is some real Skimbo-esque stuff right here, I'll be honest with you. So he thinks 
Oh, I mean, he's just he's just out of his mind. Or he doesn't know that like, he's just freestyling right now. Two hitches, streak. So he knows this guy's cover two. At least it was last play. So this Josh Gordon could really be an option here. He, re I, I thought he put another streak out here. That was really the play. He really went a streak, a fade, a hitch and hitch. Now I will tell you right now, fellas, in chat, these two guys aren't getting the football. They're not. This flat zone will probably cover both of them. What Ryan does here is cover two. I promise if he put Smith on a fade, Gordon would be more open than he is. But he's going to put his safety here in the third to go cover the middle of the field. Dion's covering this whole – this is this is a wild play right here. This is this is something special. So pretty much your only option on this really is Kittle or Gordon because if this is, if this is a third, which it is, Kittle can go to the left here. And Gordon, if it's covered too, can, can catch it right down the middle. And what happens here after he snaps the ball, like I said, he's a third. Kittle could be an option, but he kind of covers him. Gordon's really not an option. These two guys are absolutely <laughs> – his two hitches aren't getting busy for him. And he goes ahead, those are high to Gordon. Now he told me he liked Gordon over Randy Moss. Me, myself, you know I have a Randy Moss emote. Randy Moss might come down with that one, boys. I don't know. But that play killed him. Third and ten, man. Got to cook a super dot up here. If not a super dot, get half. So we go back to that manageable situation. This is trips, man. His money play. He's going to the same thing again. Fade Kittle. Because he sees this guy in, in a in a in a third. So you gotta fade Kittle. You have to. Now I'ma tell you, I watched this play four times already. I hate this play with a passion too. He goes slant here in route here. Once again, these two guys really are not these two streaks. Could be options, but he's pretty much looking for the in route. Or the slant. Both running right into a cloud, a yellow, and a user. There's no high-low action. There's nothing else really involved. Michael Vick, I mean, Michael <laughs> wishes Vick. Donovan McNabb does get busy, gets out of pocket, makes it manageable. Now, the freestyle guy, Jay Wolfman, got a freestyle again. He got to find one, one slant, one flat route, one corner route, something to get open right now. Fourth and three, back and bunch tight end. I love it because the thing about Bunstein, it can attack the middle of the field very well, very quick. I don't think this is what he goes with, but it's what he starts with. This is what he goes with, I think. Yeah. So, I have a philosophy. If I get somebody to a fourth down, man, you're getting every, you're getting the kitchen sink. If you're going to dot me, you want to make a read like that instantly. <sighs> now, this is 3 through 5 normal. Most people, it's going to be some type of cover to cloud flat. You got your deep blue over here. So, pretty much, when you come to the line here, you have all these guys on defense right here. If he blitzes at you, these guys aren't options to throw the ball to. You know, without without a flat route over on this side, this corner route's never going to be an option for him to throw. He's going to have to look in the middle of the field. Now, if he blitzes, he's only going to have a split second. We saw the wheel route earlier be an option when he had the flat route out here, not only to, you know, move the flat route out of the flat zones all the way to the sideline, but also be a blocker if he has to snap and load this quick to Ricky Williams. But right now, he just has a drag to Kittle, a slant to Tyree Kill. That's what he's put all his money in right here. Uh, because, like I said, these guys aren't options. Because I just don't – if this was a zig or this was a flat to take this flat zone out of the way, and I don't know, these guys just aren't options to me. It's all going to come down to Kittle or Hill. They're going like this, and when you have two routes that go like this, you're going to have two seconds of the play where you have to wait to see what his user guards. Pretty much. This play is going to come down to am I going to throw the drag to Kittle or the slant to Hill. 
All this other stuff is 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 pretty much pointless. Although he has thrown the wheel route to Ricky Williams, but once he doesn't have that flat route to the Kittle, I feel like Ricky Williams isn't really an option for him. So it's all coming down to I have to make a read. I have to read where your user is going. And I talked about that earlier in the game. I hate making that the option on the play. Because I don't want to flirt with the user. I don't want to get lurked. I don't want to get embarrassed. I don't want to do a user pick. And I have to sit here and wait a second to see which one he guards. This is all. This is like deliverance all over again. His offense. Two slants. Pick and choose. Go. And what happens on this play He's going to snap it. Ryan sends one, two, three, four, five, six people. Flat, flat. I don't know if these are deep blues. They are deep blues, deep blues. He has the whole middle of the field. So, like I said, one, two, three people are not options. It's going to come down to drag or slant. You have to wait for this guy. And you hold on. And both of these guys are bumping into each other. And Ryan is covering both of these receivers by himself, causing the sack. Boom. Ball's hit up. Ryan has the ball. Okay, so that's two trips inside inside the red zone that could have been field goals that turned out to be turnovers. Also, the tipped-up pick in the air that Vita Vea caught. So, Wolfman played good offense, man. He definitely moved the ball very well, especially against a good defensive player like Ryan. He moved the ball very well, and it was uh, unfortunate that he was not able to come up with point, on points only on one of his four drives that he scored points. He played better offense than just seven points, man. It really was kind of unfortunate that he didn't score any points. Wish he would have drew up a better play there on fourth and two. Here we go with a – there we go. Big play right there to stop first down, man. That's where you win in these situations. Get him to a second and 14. He has to get the ball back. He has all three timeouts. He'll definitely get the ball back if he plays this right. If Ryan can – if he can come up with a couple big stops down here. Now, this is – these next two plays are crucial plays – where people will say, Wolfman, I mean, you're not going to necessarily say anybody got really lucky, and to the naked eye, you won't say anybody got lucky, but these next two plays are unbelievably lucky, and you won't really see it. Right there, boom, boom. That hit stick from Jamal Adams on on Stephon Diggs. We've seen Wolfman manning up these routes all day with this safety or this safety, whatever it may be. Right now, if you're Wolfman, you're in a situation where you need to get the ball back and you need the clock to stop. And for Stefan Diggs to hold on to this pass right here, like, look at this defense. Boom. Not only does he gain two, three yards, which isn't a big deal, the clock keeps running. So that's th- it, that counts for five yards and 30 seconds. Like, that's crazy. Yep, exactly. Five yards and 30 seconds. That's what that catch that Stefan Diggs. Now, people won't say, oh, Strafing got lucky. But that's an incredibly lucky play right there. Now, the next play, Jay Wolfman gets super crazy. I don't know. He's doing even more wild stuff. He throws the hitch. And once again, Tyreek Hill on Melvin. Look at this. Threw a strip animation. Strip animation with this other guy diving at his feet. Holds on to the ball. Four seconds and 30. No, what is it? Four yards and 30 seconds. Now, people killed Jay Wolfman for calling that timeout. But I didn't mind the timeout at all. Right now... You're pretty much – your timeouts, it's 30 seconds, whether it's before the two-minute warning, after the two-minute warning. Me, myself, I never call timeout uh, before the two-minute warning, rarely ever. But I just want to – the microcosm of those two catches, one cost a timeout. The other one cost 30 seconds. They combined to cost him nine yards. If he drops those two passes, it's fourth and 13 or fourth and 14. Completely different situation than fourth and five. Huge, huge, huge catches that are so underrated in in terms of being lucky. I, people talk about aggressive catches, fumbles, all that type of things being lucky. But those two plays were huge in the luck category, man. I don't mind the timeout. It's fourth down. Let's see what Ryan has to do. This is the play of the game. It really is. We've seen how Wolfman has got huge, hugely aggressive on defense, manning people up all over the place. Got to spy Michael Vick. He's in this formation again. Now, I, honestly, I didn't even pay attention to this earlier in, in the game when he ran this formation. But what he did was he manned up this guy, cross man, cross man, deep blue. Nobody was on the tight end on, in in the uh, first half, and he ran a tight end on a fade, which pretty much was easy because his deep blue covered it and everybody else was covered. What Ryan, I don't know if Ryan remembered this, and I don't even know if it's that big a deal. 
But he kind of goes to the similar defense. I want to show it again. Cross man, cross man. He's got to guard Moss. That's a, a pretty wild defense. And this is why I love being able to see people's play art to see what they do. But earlier in the game, like I said, he had Pruitt on a streak. And Pruitt was covered easily because there were so many deep blues. But what he does on this play, for all the chaloops, puts Pruitt on a drag. Boom. Why? And Compton needs his money. Make sure you guys watch my man Compton videos. Jesus. What the hell? What did I? And we're seeing Joel out of nowhere. What button did I hit? But anyway, he throws the drag underneath to my man Pruitt. Gets the first down. Clock continues to roll. Crazy adjustment. Go into a random formation twice in the game. When you play against your opponent in the formation of running, you get comfortable to the routes they like, to the route combinations they want to use, especially when they need four or five yards. For Ryan to pop in that random U trips and go ahead and uh, cook up a quick little dot was definitely a big move, a big, huge play in the game. And here we go. We get to a point in the game where uh, Ryan just wants to use some time. Right there, he got caught audible and Use his timeout. That's fine. You know, this run right here is going to take me to the two-minute warning. Another first down this game will be over. And this is where uh, we talk about you've got to know how to stop every run. This is going to have wham. It's going to have toss. He goes with the wham. Oh, number 57. I forget what this guy's name. He was a double-name guy. But he was he really played well for uh, Wolfman. Number 57 seems like a linebacker, too, when he got him a D tackle somehow. I don't know how who that guy is, but he definitely made some big plays for Wolfman. Once again, gets him to a second and ten. Trips tight end again. First and foremost, I know it has all the routes and everything, but you have to be playing inside zone, really. That's the most important thing you have to be playing. I would get him. Uh, he's blitzing everybody. <clears throat> and that time, Joey Bosa did not get the edge. Gives him hope right here that he gets the first down, but that's pretty much cooked as we see Jag in the background. Shout out to Jag. He's in the background. You know what I'm saying? That first down was huge. So, but he able to use his timeout. He will get the ball back if he comes off the field here. Probably with a minute left. Once again, we got to stop him inside zone. There it is. Boom. Jesus. 20 got chucked. I believe that's Justin Reed. So, we get to a second and six. Really got to get off the, off the ball here. This is another reason why Trips tight end is so, you know, so dangerous this year because not only does it have the great pass plays, also has the inside zone that Bunch doesn't have and that other great formations don't have. And, you know, so it definitely puts a lot of stress on your defense. Right here, you got to sell out. And now he actually comes out of their center, gets outside, jukes a little bit, breaks through. Leonard Fournette wins the game for strafe, and that'll end the game. That's pretty much it. Run the clock out, man. That was a huge game for my man uh, Strafe to go ahead and get that victory. It definitely was a hard-fought game. And like I said, if Wolfman takes some things back, man, he really uh, cost himself a lot of points inside the red zone. And uh, what's going call it? Yeah, like I just, I was, I was DMing him today. I said, do you regret anything he said? Two big ones. Instead of doing that pass play with, with Irvin and running back, just run the ball with Irvin and just put it on conservative or something. Get Ricky back in the game. And he said he would have kicked instead of going for that fourth and two. I didn't mind going for that fourth and two that close, especially it could have been the last drive of the game. I mean, like I said, just where I wish you a couple plays. A couple plays, he got a little crazy with the freestyling, man. And, I feel like a man players to the day we die, we're always going to have that one. I feel like he never had one setup that he went to. Like this is my, this is my go-to get, f you know, five yards or under play. This is my dot. This is my main play. Like we talked so much about Skimbo last week that, you know, he really just had two, three setups he went to every time. These are my three setups. Boom, boom, boom. It's like robotic. Whereas Jay Wolfman was the complete opposite. Man, he just let he, – he flew by the seat of his pants, and he just out here doing fades, slants, everything all over the field. And I felt like if – like if you got to have that one play you're always comfortable going with, man. And that's really something if I tell Joey Wolfman, man, if you need five to ten yards, if you need 
10 yards. If you need three yards, you have to have that one money play, so to say. Like, he kind of had the two money formations, but I don't think he ever had that one money play, that lockdown money play that can really get him uh, – get him really going with that man and that's definitely something i wish he would uh go ahead and uh incorporate to his game for the most part <clears throat> but like i said he'll continue to get better at that and uh it's definitely something he's gonna work on going forward and i told him man he's gonna be really good at draft champions because anybody that can freestyle that good and play that well while freestyling that much is gonna be good in draft champions man go ahead and get you a book with some type of trips or some type of, you know, under center or something and freestyle a couple corner routes and slants, and he'll do really well with uh, draft champions, man. But definitely you can't leave points on the board, and that's the one thing Ryan did not do. He didn't leave any points on the board, man. If he was in field goal range, he took his three proudly, played defense, came up with some huge turnovers, a turnover on downs, fumble with the quarterback, and the Vita Veda pick, man. That was definitely a uh, – Three biggest plays in the game were those plays, that fourth and two, fumble with McNabb, and that, that, that Vita Via pick. Definitely were the only times that uh, Jay Wolfman really got stopped, man. He played a great game. He's definitely going to be back. And the thing I like most about him is he really has the desire to get better. And that's if you put your desire and you put your energy into this game and anything you do in life, man, you're really going to succeed. And I wish him the best for draft champions. And I also wish my man straight from the best in the club series, you know. Let's see if he can make a run, secure that spot in Ultimate League, and Really put his mark on uh, the club series this week. And uh, that brings, brings us to the NFL. Because we talked about the Vikings so much, man. <sighs> the Vikings, I know it's a lot of Vikings fans. I know Strafen is a Vikings fan. And I, it, it really doesn't pain me at all to laugh at the Vikings. Because you guys know I'm an Eagles fan, man. And, and what happened to them this weekend really was, was funny. I mean, they paid Kirk Cousins a lot of money. I don't know what the stat is. I've seen it all over Twitter. Kirk Cousins is 4-38 and 38 versus, versus teams with winning records or something astronomical like that, man. We needed, as the Eagles fans, we needed the Eagles to win and we needed the Vikings to lose. And the Vikings lost. You know, they laid down. And um, the, the Eagles got in the playoffs. And let me tell you guys what the playoff, I'll make my picks for the playoffs, man. Uh, and talk about... What I think is going to happen, obviously, I'm an Eagles fan, so you have to take everything I say about the Eagles kind of with a grain of salt. But we can definitely talk about all the teams that are in the playoffs. I definitely think the Saints really have the edge going as they have home field advantage. You also have to go with the Chiefs who have home field advantage on in the AFC, man. But like I said, the Vikings laid down. The Eagles are actually really hot right now. Nick Foles got the reins back. Definitely got the team playing really well, getting ready to go into the playoffs. And we can, we can take a look here at the playoff bracket. What we have up right now is the playoff bracket. And what's it going to look like to win this Super Bowl 53? Obviously, the Eagles are Super Bowl, whatchamacallit, Super Bowl champions, the defending Super Bowl champions. They are uh, down here at the sixth seed. We go into, into Soldier Field Sunday at 4 o'clock. And obviously, I like the Eagles. I think the Bears have a great defense. I think the Bears' strength of their defense is their defensive line. The Eagles' offensive line is formidable, one of the best offensive lines in the game. I will tell you this, man, of Jason Peters. Jason Peters, I feel like he plays one half of every game. He's been in and out. He's been hurt, banged up, quad injury. This. If Big V has to play in this game, it might get dark for the Eagles. But if Jason Peters goes ahead and is the warrior that he always is, Plays four quarters. I think the combination of Jason Peters, Lane Johnson, Jason Kelsey, Pro Bowler Brandon Brooks. The Eagles have probably one of the best offensive lines in the league. Like I said, definitely great combination of tackles, man, between Lane Johnson and Jason Peters. So, I mean, if they get manhandled, then, I mean, God bless the Bears are different. You know, that's just that's just how it is. Now, I've heard that good Khalil Mack is different. Khalil Mack, the Eagles held Aaron Donald. I don't think Aaron Donald had a stat against the Eagles. J.J. Watt, they didn't, he didn't do anything against Lane Johnson and them. Clowney did go off, but that's when Big V came in the game because Jason Peters left. And that's where I'll tell you, if Jason Peters has to leave that left tackle spot and we have to bring in Big V, who played all last year in the Super Bowl, that's definitely going to be a problem. So that's definitely one of the biggest keys for me is if Jason Peters can play the whole game 
would love to establish some type of run against the Bears. I feel like the Eagles don't run the ball very well. It's something they did very well last year. The biggest difference between the two teams, between the Eagles this year and last year, is them running the ball. And and we'll see what goes on. On the other side of the ball, can Mr. Trubisky expose the, um, the Eagles secondary? I mean, I can't say enough about this kid, Avante Maddox, since he's been back from his injury where he was out a couple weeks. Put him at the left cornerback spot which is probably the, the more important left cornerback spot of the two. And he's been very good, man. And he's definitely been good. Rasul Douglas at the other corner spot. The Eagles are down their top three corners. They're down their free safety. So they're definitely still hurt in the secondary. But we'll see. I saw Anthony Miller for the Bears got banged up last week. Obviously, they have Allen Robinson. I don't know. He didn't play last week. Taylor Gabriel left last week. I mean, we'll see how healthy those guys are. But they have a decent little wide receiver core. That can get the Eagles problem, especially with how banged up the Eagles secondary is. But at the end of the day, it's Mitch Trubisky. So hopefully he has, I mean, for the Eagles fans, I mean, he has a little hiccup in his first playoff game, biggest game of his life. We'll see how he performs, man. He's really the key to that team. If you say anything is a weakness to the Bears, it's got to be the quarterback. And not that he's a weakness. He's just young. He's inexperienced. He's very green. And uh, hopefully for the Eagles fans, that's definitely going to be their weakness for the day. But defensively it's pretty much can the Eagles stop the run which I think they're the Eagles strength is stopping the run Michael Bennett Fletcher Cox Brandon Graham them, do, them dogs are ready to fight with Nigel Bradham Jordan Hicks they do a very good job against the run I mean since the Eagles have gotten Fletcher Cox I feel like they, they haven't gotten they've had great run defense and uh I I really don't see the Bears running the ball I don't see the Eagles running the ball so I think the ball's the hand is going to be in the quarterback's hands and the offensive line's hands you know and I said the strength of the Bears is the D-line. That's the strength of the Eagles, too. So it's definitely going to be a hard-fought game. I think it's going to be somewhere in, the, in like, 20, 20, something like that. Not high scoring. I'm going to give the edge to the Eagles because they have the better quarterback, more experienced team. That's all. And I'm an Eagles fan. So you can take that for what it is. But then let's go to the other NFC matchup. Cowboys, Seahawks. I will tell you, as a lifelong Cowboy hater, my hate has kind of dissonated a little bit. I really, I like to laugh at them, but I don't hate the Cowboys anymore just because they haven't had that much success. They haven't been that good. And I don't really hate them that much anymore, really. But I still want them to lose. But they definitely put the Seahawks, who, I mean, we talked about the Seahawks dynasty being over, man, but they're still a decent team. They're really, and I guess they're young on defense now with the Griffin brothers, and they got Frank Clark up there on the D-line, still have Bobby Wagner, who's still, I mean, one of the best linebackers in the game. So they still have, anytime you have a linebacker that that's a middle linebacker that, that that is that good, much like in Carolina with Keekly, when you have a middle linebacker that's good, that's the heart of your defense, man. Your defense is always going to be formidable when your best player is a middle linebacker, and he's that good. And that's pretty much who Seattle is with Bobby Wagner. They're definitely a different team in Seattle and home, and I don't want to say they're bad on the road, but they're not. They don't have that 12th man, so we'll see if they're able to go into Dallas. Who, I mean, Dallas. I think what holds Dallas back all the time is their quarterback, obviously, and their coaching is just mediocre. Just the definition of mediocre. That's going to come down to man. They can stop Zeke, put the ball in uh, Dak Prescott's hand. Kim Dak Prescott makes a couple big plays down the field in the passing game to Amari Cooper, maybe underneath the Cole Beasley or that Michael Gallup kid that's really come on strong. And it, the the flip side of this is is Dak Prescott is the worst player on the Cowboys. He's their biggest weakness. Where you look on the other side of the ball, Russell Wilson is the best player on Seattle. He is their biggest strength. That is the biggest difference in this game. Both teams have solid defense. The Cowboys are on very good defense. Both teams want to run the ball. Chris Carson with Seattle. and uh, But one has a Pro Bowl quarterback, a Super Bowl winning quarterback. The other one has Dak Prescott. So we'll see if that can overcome the home field. Dallas has not had a great home field advantage. They don't have a home field. I mean, it's really nothing crazy like the 12th man or Arrowhead or the Dome in, in New Orleans. It's just Dallas. You know, it's definitely a huge stadium where a lot of outsiders come in to see their team play. It's more of a tourist attraction than a football stadium. And it's, it's probably hurt Dallas more than helped them in the last however many years they've been playing there. I don't know what the record is at Holmes, but it's probably one of the least home field advantage type cities in the country. So it's pretty much the strength of Russell Wilson, the weakness Dak Prescott. I got to go with Russell. Russell won't go in there and make a couple more plays 
Not even super nice throws, just plays where he runs around, finds somebody. Got to go with Russell Wilson. Winning that, that will set up us for Eagles, Saints, Seahawks, Rams. NFC West, Eagles going into the Dome to face New Orleans. Those are my picks for the first round, Eagles and the Seahawks. We'll talk about the next round later. AFC, these are some great matchups. First one, obviously, the Colts going to the Texans. AFC South matchup. I believe the Texans won both of these games. Maybe, maybe not. I'm not sure. But the home field advantage. Frank Wright got the Colts playing really good. I believe they were 1-5 early in the year, much like the Texans who were 0-3. Oh both of these teams started really sluggish and really picked up a lot of speed, really started playing well, led by both of the quarterbacks. Andrew Luck, good to see him back from being hurt all the time. Uh, really with that neck or back or shoulder. Everything was really torn up with Andrew Luck. And it was, see, it was at one point where it was like, could he even throw the football again? But he's really playing well. Deshaun Watson, DeAndre Hopkins, people argue that he is probably maybe might have passed Antonio Brown certainly this year for best wide receiver in the league. So that's definitely a, a, definitely a big uh, strength of the – Texans is DeAndre Hopkins and Deshaun Watson. One of the biggest things is Will Fuller is out, and uh, they just acquired Demarius Thomas, but he tore his Achilles uh, against the Eagles two weeks ago, so that's definitely... They lost pretty much all the other weapons around DeAndre Hopkins, so he's pretty much by himself. Their tight end isn't really crazy, and their running backs really aren't that dominant. I mean, so it's pretty much on the hands of Deshaun Watson and DeAndre Hopkins. Let's see what they can do. They are playing at home, and then we got to talk about Clowney and J.J. Watt, and that defense is just ferocious. If And then you also want to go over here to see the Colts' defense, man. A couple of the young linebackers, they got Darius Leonard is a horse. Definitely got some some good players up front. Jabal Sheard, I believe, with the Colts on the front seven. So it's definitely going to be a good matchup. Any division matchup is already pretty tough, but I, I – this is a tough one for me. I mean, it's pretty much what I look at in the playoffs, man. I look at defenses and I look at quarterbacks, you know, and Deshaun Watson, I watched him play the Eagles. He was very impressive. And defensively, I give the edge to the Texans and they're playing at home. I got to go with the Houston Texans to go ahead and get this win against the Colts. The Colts snuck in on the last day where they really dominated uh, the Tennessee Titans, who unfortunately had to start. What's the name? Uh, the I don't even want to say his name because I don't even remember it. The quarterback, the Tennessee Titans, had to start, and he actually beat. Uh, they they actually blow out the Titans because of that. But I do like the Texans to win this matchup, so don't move on. The next one is a game we saw three, two, two or three weeks ago. The Ravens' defensive team with Lamar Jackson, who's really I think they said they're five and one since Lamar Jackson has joined the fold. Uh, really, we got a read option pop, and Lamar Jackson, uh, I mean, he's not Michael Vick, Vick speed, but he's like one notch below, man. He's really electric when he gets the ball, throwing some pretty good passes too, man. So he's definitely in, in, injected some life into the Ravens offense. Definitely got the run game playing a lot better. They already went into uh, Los Angeles. I think we all call him San Diego. But he went to Los Angeles about three weeks ago and came up with that win. Eric Weddle, obviously Terrell Suggs still doing his thing. C.J. Mosley, those boys over there, uh, Marlon Humphrey, Jimmy Smith, Tony Jefferson. Really, probably between them and the Bears is probably the, one of the better defenses in the league so far this year. So, And then the Chargers, Phillip Rivers, man, he's always been a fighter. Pretty much how I describe Phillip Rivers. I mean, I hopefully Keenan Allen will be 100%. Antonio Gates is still getting it done. And uh, this will probably – one of the better games of the, of the uh, weekend. This will be Saturday in the afternoon. Chargers versus the Ravens. I think I'll go with the defensive team. Let's go with the Ravens. Go ahead, boom, move them on. I don't exactly know what seed these guys are, but I'll tell you what. The Patriots don't want to see either of these teams. The Patriots are the two seed. I know this is the five seed. So this is the – so the Patriots would probably see the Texans. Yeah, they so said the Patriots will beat the Texans, but they won't beat either. The Patriots would lose to either of these teams. They always struggle versus the Ravens, if we know that in the history of the Ravens. The Ravens always give the Patriots a hard time, and Phillip Rivers goes in there and fights. Either of these teams go to New England, they win. But it looks like unless the Colts win, the Texans will go to New England, and I think uh, the Texans 
<clears throat> we'll lose to New England. And then I said the Ravens at Kansas City, one of the better regular seasons and games of the year, or the Chargers at Kansas City would be another crazy game in the second round. But like I said, I like the Ravens, I like the Texans in the AFC. That's my predictions for the playoffs, man. It's going to be a great time. And that brings me to my uh, – let's talk about week 17 and how it relates to Madden. This isn't necessarily a uh, – in-game thing like Madden with the clock management or anything like that is more so week 17 came down to a lot of things a lot of, like I talked about the Eagles needed to win and the Vikings needed to lose for the Eagles to get into the playoffs and so on and so forth and the the Ravens needed to win and the Steelers needed to win and the Steelers wanted the Browns to win and I'll tell you kind of how some of this works more so it, game by game type of thing like like the Eagles if this were Madden right and I was in a league and I needed to win a game boom okay well, let me look at this bring up this schedule here so you'll see all these games that, that went on but if this were you know say we're in my head league now nah, listen we, we it's not that we cheat it's just like listen um if I say uh joke you don't need to win this week let me get the win or if, you know, Skimbo need to make the playoffs and I'm I'm out of the playoffs. I have no desire to win. In fact, it, to this point in the NFL, it is more it is smarter for a team like the Giants or a team like the Redskins or a team like the Browns to go ahead and lose because it helps my draft stock. You know, I'm not gaining anything by winning this game. That's how it kind of is in Madden. Like if I'm in a league, I'm out the playoffs, but I had to play week 17. This guy will come to me and say, W, you know, let me throw you $100 or I'll give you $200. You lay down, give me the easy win. Boom. That's pretty much what we would do in Madden, even if it was ultimately, you know, behind the closed scenes, behind there. You know, if someone's out of the playoffs, man, you don't want them to keep – you don't want them to be the reason you don't make the playoffs. So what I've all thought about this whole week is, like, does that happen in the professional sports world, man, because the Eagles needed to beat the Redskins, and the Redskins had absolutely nothing to play for. Not that the Redskins are any good. They probably couldn't win the game anyway. But there's Jeffrey Lurie, the owner of the Eagles, who said to make X amount of more millions of dollars if the Eagles make the playoffs, regardless of home tickets, regardless of uh, what's him call it, regardless of not having a home game. He's going to sell so much more. He's going to be on TV so much more. The whole organization as a whole is going to just grow so much more from making the playoffs. Does he go to Daniel Snyder and say, I'll give you this, that, and the third if you just tell your team to lay down? Does that type of mentality that goes on in Madden all the time, whether it be group play, whether it be a league, whether it be, you know, ultimate league, whatever it may be, man, if I don't need to win this game, other said man player will come to me, offer me something for me not to even try. And I always wonder to myself, does that happen at a professional sports level, man? And, and and at what point does it does it stop? So if if Jeffrey Laura calls Daniel Snyder, you know Daniel Snyder, man, I need you guys to throw the game. I'll give you X. I'll give you you know two hundred million, whatever it may be. If those guys are that money, I I have no idea. I'll give you two hundred million, or I'll give you this many jobs, or this many stocks, or this many opportunities, whatever it may be at that level. It's not $200 like it would be at our level. But my point is, okay, so he says that Daniel Snyder, who does Daniel Snyder tell? Does he tell the head coach? Does he tell the, the wide receivers coach? Does he tell the team captains? Does he tell the whole team? At that point, does he offer the whole team? Like, you know, I'll give you guys another $75,000 for y'all just to go ahead and throw the game. I always wondered if that somehow plays a, uh, plays in real sports like it would in Madden because that's what we would do in Madden. Offer somebody money just to not try at all. Don't even give me the chance to lose in this game because I need to make the playoffs. And, you know, it's definitely definitely an opportunity where, like we, we talked about the Vikings a lot today. The Vikings should have called up the Bears and said, listen, let us get in the playoffs, man. I'll give you <clears throat> X amount of money or whatever to lay down because the Vikings went out there and lost. So that's just something I think about all the time, man. But we talked about club series. And uh, it's definitely coming up time for every, I think, I don't, I don't remember, five or six teams are already done. So all other 25-plus teams, it's time for you guys to get your team in. Um, I talked to Jenny today. He told me they have to get their team in by the 6th or the 7th. 
So I know you guys are making final touches on your team, seeing what snow players you want to add, what uh, personnel you want to have before Las Vegas comes. And, and I know you guys got another week. I'm going to put another YouTube video up pretty soon about what my team looks like now. You guys have also been seeing me play a lot of salary cap. It's definitely fun since they raised the cap. It's way different than what we looked at earlier. And it's kind of weird how, you know, we just watched Strafen win and he won on 850 cap. Now, all of a sudden, the rest of the tournament is going to be on 1,400 cap or whatever, 1,175. Uh, it's a little bit – it's definitely a different game, man. When you have 60 cap DBs out there instead of 30 cap DBs, it definitely is going to be a different game, a different challenge for everybody. And that is another challenge that we've been dealing with for the last couple of years is how much the game changes, not only the game, but now the cap has drastically changed. You know, and if you're Ryan, I don't know if this hurts you or – would you rather, if you're Jay Wolfman, would you rather have played on 14 or what, 1175 cap? Is it that big of a difference? I know a lot of you guys are getting your, your teams ready. Las Vegas is where the final, like, 25 or 27 teams need to play their final fours. Good luck to anybody involved. If you're involved and you're a new booty and you don't have, I mean, obviously there's a lot of, you know, regular names that are in that top four of each team. But if you are somebody just just got into the scene, excited about your time, please reach out to me. I will help all you guys as much as possible. Um, and like I said, I'm gonna put a video about what my team looks like. And I know you guys are all getting prepared. I believe people are gonna start flying out there the end of January. So it's definitely gonna be a fun time. That's gonna be the 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 final 25, the final four of all those teams. I uh, probably next week I'll do a whole little list of everybody that's on the team and give you who I think is gonna win those uh those teams. And what's it going to look like for the final 32, that big tournament, which is going to be held not in Las Vegas, in California. Originally, everybody was going to go to California, but now they switched it, I want to say, in the last month. Or had they switched it to Las Vegas. So another crazy last-minute switch from EA that went from everything was going to be in this Redwood, California place. And then, I seem like after the Man Classic, they then switched it to the final four for all these teams will be in Las Vegas. But then the final 32 will be in California. So it was a little bit weird that they switched that up or they didn't communicate that. When, I don't know if it was always going to be in Las Vegas. I, nobody really knows. But the final, 30, or the final four for the remaining teams will be in Las Vegas. So like I said, if you guys need help, if you need anything, reach out to me. I will help you guys as much as possible. Like I said, congratulations to Strafen on winning the Minnesota Vikings Club Series. He has the Bears. The Bears the Packers and the Bears pack and the Lions. So he's going to have to play Bugs cuz Bugs is going to win Detroit and he's going to make a run. So hopefully Ryan gets a win and then has to play Bugs. He doesn't have to play Bugs right away because Bugs is going to make at least final 4 in the club series. But uh and we'll see who's in Viking or who's in the Bears, Canes, Canes and my man Proof. I think my man Larry Proof made it, but we'll see. But Canes is probably the favorite to win that. And then the Packers would be, I don't know if Drag is still the Packers. But between Pack, maybe Drag, Canes, and Boogs, and Strafen, that would definitely be a tough four for that division. And we'll see what Strafen can do with that, man. And also, congratulations to Wolfman for making that run. Uh, keep trying to get better, you know, and you're going to do I, – I already see the way you played. You're going to do very well in uh, – what you call it, very well in draft champion. So stay at it. I mean, like I said, I really appreciate you guys checking out the show. And um, please hit the like button. Please comment on what else you want us to talk about. Next week I'll probably lay out every team's final four, make predictions on that, and talk about the club series moving forward even more. So I really appreciate you guys checking this out. This is Needed Podcast Episode 11. I'm out of here. Can you hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me now? Can you hear me?